and dear viewers in various windows, in various communication channels, I'm glad to welcome you to the second part of this substantial day. Allow me first to tell you what is Free Seas Initiative. Free Seas Initiative is a project which was born out of necessity to realize and recognize, accept and seek solutions to the issue that the countries who joined the European Union in 2004 and later have huge infrastructure investment gap. So we cannot build back better like the rest of the developed world, but we have to build better simply because there is a lack. The Free Seas Initiative was born as President's Initiative to draw attention to this problem. Gradually, the Free Seas Initiative took a turn to be more practical. What has been the most important result of the years of the Free Seas Initiative, which has passed, is that finally, the 102 million people who live in the Free Seas region, they recognize themselves that actually, despite the huge infrastructure gap, we are not demandeurs, we are contributors in the European scene and also in the global scene. And you know why? Because these people of these countries are the most innovative and most creative. They are the most dynamic part of the European Union. Why? Because they have a lot of catch up to do. And if you need to do catch up what you do, you leapfrog, it's evident. And all the Free Seas nations have been looking for ways and means on how to leapfrog. Have they managed? Yes. How can I say so? Because the economic growth in Free Seas countries persistently is stronger than in the Europe as a whole. These people are catching up with the developed part of Europe. How are they doing it? First and foremost, of course, by smart legislation. Part of it is provided by the European Union, and this is the beauty of it. Sometimes people want to say that EU legislation is a straitjacket, which doesn't allow countries to individually achieve fast growth results. This is not true. European Union legislation has created a perfect permissive environment for cross-border investment. And this perfect permissive environment applies to all free seas countries. Some of them are in the Eurozone, not everybody is. But investing cross-border into free seas countries means you are basically on the same grounds, more or less everywhere, because it is part of the European free market. This makes cross-border projects, which of course, when we are talking connectivity, much easier to run. Yes, free seas nations are people who care also about the eastern neighborhood of the European Union. And therefore, they have made sure that the projects which have one leg in free seas countries can have another leg in Ukraine or Western Balkan countries in order to make the whole region to realize its potential. But first and foremost, and in the first stages of the initiative, the accent is on the free seas countries themselves. Now, what else has the initiative achieved? In my understanding, talking about this advantage, what this region has, has made our own companies take notice of the opportunities provided. I see step by step how Estonian companies realize that free seas countries are also for them the perfect place to invest into and trade with, which is a shift in the mind of the people and enterprises of the free seas countries. Because previously we thought that the, the best uh, added value comes from trading with the West and investing into the West. We now realize that there is potential in our own region and I see more and more Estonian companies going southwards by the route of the free seas down to the Black and Adriatic Sea. This is already an achievement. Of course, to facilitate these developments, there has to be a financial contribution to the Free Seas Initiative. 
And Free Seas Initiative has created a Free Seas Investment Fund. Free Seas Investment Fund is privately run. The projects are decided by professional fund management. They have to have proper return on investment. They cannot be decided by according to any political influence. And they have to contribute to fulfilling this investment gap into infrastructure, or as we nowadays say, connectivity. It can invest in all kinds of connecting facilities, be it in digital, be it in on roads, be it in railways, be it in energy pipelines and crossings. But they all nowadays, of course, have a digital component within them. Free Seas Investment Fund aims to achieve the volume of three to five billion. And my personal dream is that this will not be the last fund. It will be the first fund. And if we have proved, or I would say reproved the concept, that private-public partnership on this scale, where private investment is used in order to achieve economic development, is still alive and still valid, because we know that, I mean, in the last decade, maybe it has been more like public money is so cheap, let's just invest public money. I think it's inherently not the right thing to do. So if the Free Seas Investment Fund proves this concept, I'm sure that the next funds could be already more dedicated also towards the Eastern partners. I'm very grateful for those who started the Free Seas Initiative, Kolinda grabar Kitarovic and Andrzej Duda. I'm extremely grateful to our American partners who have been pushing us to be more practical, which led to the fund creation. And now I understand also there will be uh, resources provided by, uh, by US, as promised once uh, in Munich Security Conference by the last US administration. I'm very grateful for all free seas countries, governments, who have gotten involved in the initial presidential initiative and decided to contribute to the Free Seas Funds. And I'm very grateful to our business partners who run the fund and also to those business partners who have applied for the funding, working with us towards achieving this objective, to make sure that the Free Seas region is connected like a region in 21st century needs to be. And now, how this all links to the trusted connectivity. One of the Free Seas Initiative's slogans has been smart connectivity. And Tallinn Digital Summit this year is dedicated to making sure that all our connections do what they need to do 24-7, and they do not do things which we don't want them to do. For that, obviously, we need to make sure that democratic forces are able to validate that indeed our connections, smart connections work this way. This is trust-based connectivity. How to build that trust? Well, we're trying to do it here in Tallinn today. We are trying to build Tallinn consensus around the thinking that democratic nations in the 21st century need to come together and make sure their people and their businesses can rely on every network, that nobody withdraws the service to achieve their political objectives, that nobody knows is around in the data to achieve their political objectives. How to do it? Well, there is one global example of really a connecting system, which we do all trust and use daily and invest heavily into, thinking that it will be there today, tomorrow, the year after. This is the GPS system, the geopositioning system. It's run by a democracy for whom the threshold of cutting the service to achieve its objectives is extremely high. We don't know how high, it's not been tested. We need something similar now for trust-based connectivity in 21st century. But it is much more complex because we are not seeking a single service provider for a single service. What we are seeking is a free competitive market 
of connecting technologies which interoperate, talk to each other, are transparent, are able to demonstrate to our governments, parliaments, citizens that they do and only do what they are meant to do and do this all the time. That no amount of political bickering or argument would take these services offline, away from us. This is what we need to achieve. For a myriad of developers, for a myriad of builders, how to make this come together. Today in Tallinn, we have many global actors. We have a Secretary of Commerce of the United States of America. We have the Secretary General of OECD. We have the President of the European Union Council. They've come together to demonstrate that it does matter for all of them. How to reach it? First, there has to be a citizen demand. The citizen demand, I feel, has been strongly created by the pandemic. Our citizens now know that they need connectivity daily and that walking there or sending an envelope is not an alternative. Now they are asking the question, is it safe? How can we do it safely? Second, is there a willingness to lead somewhere on multilateral scheme? Yes, there is. Matthias Korman, the OECD chairman, has said that his objective is to instrumentalize the blue dot movement into something really practical. A dot on the wall, to be precise, where you can go, look at it with your mobile phone, somewhere there will be a QR code probably, and it will tell you this service is built according to our consensus that connections have to be trust-based. And therefore, you know you are safe to use them. You are safe to invest into them. You are safe to think that your data cannot leak from these systems. And you are also safe to think that no political ambition takes them offline, takes them away from you anymore. And if I mean offline, offline is a serious business. When my car orients itself on the road by talking to the road, it's also talking to other cars, lorries, bicycles. One day, I want this service to be there and I want to be able to trust that service. Now, Free Seas Initiative, because it needs to be built. Free Seas Initiative is the ideal test bed for all those important actors and players who have come together here to Tallinn or somewhere else globally, are trying to make sure that the democracies prevail in keeping control of our grids, networks, roads, railways, logistical systems, all databases. Free Seas Initiative was ready to endorse the Blue Dot Network Initiative already several years ago. Free Seas Initiative is already investing today. Free Seas Initiative is supported by all important players, United States, European Union. Free Seas Initiative can be the place where we catalyze the rest of the world to recognizing that it is possible to achieve trust-based connectivity. Why, as an Estonian, I think this is possible? Because we have this experience. European Union promised to all its citizens to give them a digital ID which will interoperate between the different countries. It is catalyzed by Estonian development of 20 years ago to give a digital ID to each and every of its citizen and six years ago to also outsiders if they so wish to operate in Estonian GovTech environment. Europe is the only region where you have this kind of cross-border agreement in place. I think Estonia was a catalyzer. I have the ambition that the Free Seas Initiative could be a similar catalyst for trust-based connectivity. We are building Tallinn consensus here today, and I believe that Free Seas Initiative could be the first test bed for this kind of consensus, using all the practical means and measures, including Blue Dot Network, in order to demonstrate to the world that there is hope, that we do not have to avoid using technology 
because we are afraid to use technology. We want to prove the point in the Free Seas Initiative. Thank you for listening. Thank you.